You may be wondering what a $4 billion investment firm managing ETFs and mutual funds has to do with war in Ukraine. I'm John Montgomery, founder and CEO of Bridgeway Capital Management, and I'm honored to be here with you to celebrate 10 years of Tugboat Institute. Not only is it an honor, I think about what ways were, were different within the community of Tugboat, and the one distinguishing factor that I think is true about me is to the best of my knowledge, I am the only member who has actually ever worked on a tugboat. <laughs> any, any deck hands out there? Oh, I see one. All right, way to go. Well, I manage risk for a living, and I have a beef. My beef is people don't take enough risks. Now, I know as business people, we take managed risk. We all do this for a living. But when it, times, when it comes time, to give our money, to donate our time, we tend, to pen, we tend to pick safe projects with minor goals and no chance of failure. Where's the disconnect between our business life and our giving life? Well, for the next few minutes, I want to share the playbook of Bridgeway Capital Management about risking more for an audacious purpose. So number one, start with a big purpose. And how did, how did I get to mine? When I was 13 years old, I learned about the Holocaust. And it was a huge disconnect for me. But fortunately, I believed completely hook, line, and sinker, never again. We would never let that happen again. When I was 19 years old, the uh, Cambodian genocide happened, and almost one in four people, Cambodians, died in that genocide. And I thought, wait a minute, what happened to never again? This is how it happens. People think there's nothing I can do, and so it goes on. When I was 38 years old, I was founding Bridgeway, so I was pretty distracted. Almost a million people died in Rwanda that year. And I thought, wait a minute, this is on my watch. The world is a smaller place now. These people are in my backyard. These are my people. We as humanity overall, that teeny tiny piece of the toilet paper that we heard about earlier this morning, that's all of us together. Do we have to let this happen? And my answer was no. So. I'm going to say that this story is really not about me, though, and it's also not about the two more recognizable people in this photo, President Zelensky and Sir Richard Branson. I want to focus on the woman to Zelensky's right, Shannon Sedgwick Davis. She's the CEO of Bridgeway's Foundation. I met Shannon when she was 31, and I was impressed with her commitment, her drive, her brilliance, and she just wouldn't stop. She could, she could talk about a complex legal problem. She could talk with presidents of nations. Uh, she could physically herself pick up a child victim of human trafficking in Cambodia and walk out with her from a brothel. That's an extraordinary individual. So what is my role? in this. I'm not in the picture. I'm off scene. My role is to provide a safe place, a platform within which our leaders at Bridgeway can risk more. In Shannon's case, I looked to hire a person who um, had alignment with passion and mission with what we were doing. I was uh, then creating a, a platform where she could risk more, both personally and professionally. Empowerment, prayer, and demonstrating demonstrably delegation to her, and then, for heaven's sakes, get out of the way. So Bridgeway started this venture and the first, uh, the first um, 
avenue or the first conflict that we took on was at the time the longest running rebel war in Africa called the Lord's Resistance Army. And over an eight year period, through a number of efforts, we saw the displacements, um, the deaths, the kidnappings decline by more than 90% based on an independent review of our work. From that point, we moved on to concentrating on Eastern Congo. Um, and for those of you who um, are reading the newspapers, read about the school in Uganda 12 days ago. 37 students were massacred by um, an, a, a group called the ADF. That's a group that's in our crosshairs from Eastern Congo. Four of those, 20, the four of those 37 students were nieces and nephews of someone who worked for Bridgeway in Uganda. Shannon was in Uganda planning a project 20 minutes from that site. This is personal. So you wake up, and one of our mantras at Bridgeway is focus. We're a new traction or EOS company, and so focus is part of our mantra. But when do you go off center of focus? When do you, uh, when do you allow a pivot? We have a partner at Bridgeway who's from, originally from Russia, uh, and he said that Ukraine met the exact definition of a genocide. So uh, we jumped into motion. We engaged in three ways. Uh, first, we partnered with a much larger Howard Buffett Foundation to buy up gen uh, generators ahead of the winter. Uh, we engaged in gathering data for war crimes uh, uh, tribunals. This is something we know a lot about in Bridgeway. And we engaged in harvesting uh, the crop. That's something, actually, we know close to nothing about. And I'm going to focus on that last one. So Ukraine um, has one quarter of the world's um, most fertile land and is a huge exporter. Uh, the Russian military has targeted aspects of the uh, ag agricultural infrastructure. And as a result, um, uh, there are all kinds of barriers to this. How did we engage? First of all, the crop, by last, by last spring, it was clear the crop was going to die in the field. We couldn't let that happen. When somebody says, you can't do it, ask, are you sure? Shannon and her team and our, our, our partners on the ground jumped into action, bought up nearly every combine and tractor on the continent of Europe, got it across the Polish border into a war-torn area, solving all kinds of logistical problems, uh, coordinating volunteer efforts to train people and harvest. Bottom line, we got the grain. We, the larger group with our partners, got the grain to this place. This is a port in the city on the Black Sea. To the best of my knowledge, uh, we'd had no role in getting the Russian uh, government to release that grain. Sometimes you pray for partners that you'll never see and may never meet. So what's the playbook? I'm going to let you just look it over here for a second. And in closing, I want to say one last thing about risk. I put my head down on a pillow every night and go to sleep, not worrying if a bomb is going to take out my home or a soldier is going to burst through my front door. I can't say that about our partners in Ukraine and Africa. They live with that risk. They have the commitment and purpose. And I want to applaud them as the real risk takers in all of this. Thank you.